Do you think it takes thousands and thousands and maybe thousands more dollars to build a studio that will allow you to build a six-figure voiceover business? No, think again. And I don't, I'm not speaking theoretically. I'm talking about practically. I'm talking about my own personal voiceover business. I'm going to share with you how I got started and how you can get started as well. My name is Bill DeWeese. I'm a professional voiceover talent, have been for the past 17 years, a recording for about every brand imaginable globally. And I still work from my home studio here in the Midwest of the United States, where I work for a global clientele. And I also coach voiceover talent on how to build successful voiceover businesses from home as well. And on this channel right here, I have recorded over 900 voiceover tutorials. I'm so glad that you found this channel. And I'm so glad you're here this morning because pretty much every weekday morning, I get on for a few minutes to share a thought to help you to become or become more profitable in your voiceover business and in your voiceover career. So what we've been doing this week is counting down my most popular, my all-time most popular uh, YouTube videos and uh, recapping some of that content. And so that brings us to my number one all-time watched YouTube video, which is called Voiceover Studio on the Cheap. I recorded that a number of years ago. And uh, the reason I recorded it was because it's, it was so interesting. Um, you know, when I got started in voiceover, a lot of the, most of the resources that exist today weren't around. So there was a lot more guesswork. So I just did what I could, you know, I didn't worry about it. I didn't go out and, and, and post stuff on forums and ask for people's feedback. I just did it. And I was very successful with it. I built a six figure voiceover business with it and really didn't give it a whole lot of thought until as time was going by and, you know, became more and more familiar with what people were saying online and these uh, online groups, voiceover groups started to explode. And, and then what happens is these, I don't want to say sayings, but philosophies, approaches begin to emerge that people believe to be truth, to be gospel, which are anything but that. And one is that you really have to invest heavily in equipment to be successful in voiceover. I remember very early in my career, a voiceover coach, a well-known voiceover coach, when I told him what kind of microphone I was using, he said that I, you, know, you can't build a business with that. Well, what he didn't realize is I was already making six figures at the time. So yeah, you can. And I did. And um, yeah, you know, I love equipment. I've got I've got a couple of Neumann TLM-103 microphones. I have a Sennheiser 416. Uh, I mean, I love, I love all this stuff. You know, it's great. But the reality is when I first got started, I didn't have the money for this. And the, the thing is, I did, you don't need the money to do it. These are nice. And I'm certainly not saying that cheap equipment is as good. But what I'm saying is, is, is because of the technology today and that good, good technology or cheap technology is getting better and the better technology is getting cheaper. And so you can start off with so much less than you could several years ago. And I'm going to give you the particulars of, of what I used when I first got started. Uh, hopefully it will help you, inspire you to think about how you can, if you're, if, if money's an issue and you're not able to invest and, in, or you don't want to put yourself in a financial bind by getting started, nothing is more, I think, discouraging. I hear stories of people who will spend maybe $10,000 to get started. They go out and buy new computers, new booths, new equipment, new this, new that, because they're psyched up. You know, they want to do it right. And then in a few months, they've decided, oh, you know, it's not meeting their expectations. It's not happening as fast as they want it. And they've moved on. Don't, don't be that person, you know, because there's no need to be that person. You don't need to experience that kind of frustration and that kind of financial loss. So you can build it as, uh, you know, as you're able to in terms of money. And when you have the money to invest in better, invest in better. Nothing wrong with expensive microphones. I have a friend once who, you know, felt the need. He was using a $1,000 microphone, but wanted a $5,000 microphone. Has it helped his career? I, I seriously doubt it. But, you know, it gives him a personal sense of satisfaction. Great. Nothing wrong with that. If you got the money to do it, do it. But if the expectation is, well, if I spend thousand dollars on a mic, I'm going to do 10 times better in my business than if I spend $100 on a mic. That's, that's the math is wrong. It may seem right intuitively, but it's way off base. So I'm going to share those particulars. But before I do, I want to encourage you to make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you get notifications. Because as you know, I'm not always promptly at a very specific time. I try to be on between 8 and 8.30 
was out late last night. So it, you know, it was a late start this morning, but you'll get notifications when I go live. And uh, of course, give the video a thumbs up. I always appreciate that and share it with all of your friends, especially your voiceover friends who um, uh, hopefully can use this advice to further their voiceover businesses and careers, because I'm all about helping people in voiceover become more profitable to make more money. So, and it begins, you know, with, with what you invest in getting started. Now, obviously your sound is important. I've talked about that so many times because it is so important. It's something that a lot of people overlook, but here's the mistake that a lot of people make. They think that good audio equals good or expensive equipment. And that is not, although there's nothing wrong with good equipment, that's that's not necessarily true because as I've said before, and I'll say it again, that the quality of your sound is primarily dependent upon the space in which you record, not your equipment. But the, it, needs, it needs to be good equipment, but again, it doesn't have to be expensive to be good. But your space is what will primarily determine your sound. But let's talk about equipment. So when I first got started, um, you know, I was, uh, I was being downsized out of a job. And <clears throat> finances were ex extremely tight. Uh, and I, I just, I had to make it work. So here's what, <laughs> let me kind of start from the beginning. And I, I laugh when I talk about it because it seems I'm almost embarrassed to tell you because it was such a, um, you know, I feel like it was like paper clips and rubber band kind of, I'm exaggerating, but you get the idea kind of set up, but this is what it was starting with the computer. I bought a used windows computer. It was a Dell desktop. I mean, it was big. It was like that wide and like that tall. And I don't remember the specs on it, but this is, but I do remember this. The operating system was Windows 95. Okay. Windows 95. If that gives you an idea of how old the computer was. So, uh, you know, I got started in 2006 and it was, you know, older at that point in time. So, you know, it may have, it may have come out in late 1990s or early 2000s. I'm not sure, but point was it had been around the block a few times. I bought it for 75 bucks. And uh, again, I wish I could remember the specs. I didn't buy it specially. I mean, it was used, you know, it was just an old used computer. And I thought, well, this hopefully will get me started. So I paid 75 bucks for that with a windows 95 operating system. And, um, so, and by the way, the thing was loud. Oh my gosh. The internal fan on that, you know, it was just loud. And so what I did, my wife and I, um, got out the, uh, got out the drill. We set me, me up in my, my bedroom closet. It was a walk-in closet and we drilled holes in the wall where I was going to set, I had a little desk set up and I was going to set up my recording operation. And I clearly couldn't put that computer anywhere near me, at least not in the open space because it was just loud. So we drilled some holes in the wall, which went into the, um, into the bathroom. And, and so these holes went through the closet wall, came, came right out in front of the toilet in the bathroom. And I put that Dell computer right smack dab in front of the toilet there in the water closet. It was right there. And so we ported cables, uh, the, you know, from, uh, inside the, the studio, which was the walk-in closet for my microphone and everything else, uh, in through the hole so the computer could sit in the bathroom so that it, that, that drywall, the wall between the, the bathroom and the, and the closet would knock down any no noise, which it did. It did, it, it did very nicely. So, I mean, you know, you look at it, you think, oh, it's a little janky, but, it, but Hey, but it worked. I, you know, we did what we had to do. So there's the computer with the windows. I got to keep mentioning the windows 95 operating system. I used, uh, I think when I first, when I first started, it was, um, I, I had, if I remember correctly, it was Adobe. I'm not sorry, Adobe. It was before Adobe Audition, it was Cool Edit Pro. And for those of you who are newer to all of this, Cool Edit Pro was the name of the software that is now Adobe Audition. Adobe bought the software, but it was Cool Edit Pro. So it was essentially, you know, Adobe bought it, beefed it up. Uh, but I started off with a very early version of that, you know, for, for Windows. So I used that. So for the audio chain, and this is where it gets really, if you think that's funny, here, here's the audio chain. Now, the microphone that I had was actually given to me 
it was just an old, it was, it was lying around a radio station that I had I used to work for. And the new station manager who took my place, uh, where I had been, this is, had been years before, uh, he gave it to me because they weren't using them. Marshall MXL, Marshall MXL 2001 was the specific model. They haven't made that in years. It was, it's a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Uh, I mean, they look nice, but they're, you know, the Marshall MXLs are not expensive microphones. Um, but you could buy this. If you look it up on eBay right now, you could probably buy, find one for like 50 bucks. So this was, uh, you know, it was an inexpensive microphone. But it sounded fine. I mean, you know, maybe to a, an engineer who I'm sure an engineer who, you know, who would do an A-B test and listen very carefully could pick out some of the nuances. But for the average person, you know, it was not all that terribly distinguishable. At least it wasn't to me. So I had the Marshall MXL 2001 microphone. And of course, it needed some sort of interface to run into the to, into the computer. I really didn't. I had a very rudimentary understanding of all of this, by the way. When I first got started, you know, a lot of people think people who are in radio really understand audio, and that's not the case. Engineers have a much better understanding of that than than radio personalities and program directors and promotion directors and station managers. I mean, we know what we need to know, but I, you know, I, in terms of getting audio from a computer or a, a microphone into a computer, I, I really didn't un understand much about that at all. But I figured, and again, I just kind of figured this out on my own. But what I did, I got a hold of a Behringer Euro mixer. Behringer Euro, no, Euro Rack was what it was called. Behringer Euro Rack is a four channel mixer. It was about so big, just a little square thing set on the desk, four channels. And my microphone plugged into that. It had, you know, volume control and it had EQ controls. And then from that, the audio would come out in an analog format. So what I did is I ran, I'm trying to remember exactly how this went. I think it was quarter inch cables. All right. No US, no USB involved, no firewire involved. This was not a digital connection into my computer. So it comes out of the Behringer Eurorack analog at a quarter uh, I believe it was two, I had two quarter inch cables that were that were um, quarter inch on one end, but it was RCA cable on the other, which is like stereo input type cables called RCA. And it just so happened that the sound card, which was it was not a professional sound card in the computer, it was just like a stock audio sound card that if you wanted to you know run some music out to speakers or whatever you could. And so this cable, this RCA cable plugged into the back of my computer, and that's what fed the audio in. And through a lot of tinkering around, I was able to figure out how to get the audio into Cool Edit Pro. So if it sounds like I'm a little confused, it was because, I, I mean, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I really did not. I had a basic understanding of I wanted to get the audio from here into there, and I just kept playing with it and playing with it until I figured it out. So I finally got the audio, you know, into the computer. And of course, it took a lot of tweaking on the control board to get the EQ right. And I, because that's something I really didn't have a lot of experience with either. So, uh, but I did, and I had an old pair of headphones, um, probably from a Walkman or something. I don't even remember. They, I didn't go out and buy special headphones for this. It was, I just used something I had around that I, used, I think with a Walkman, I used that. So not high end by any stretch of the imagination. Then I had an external monitor that I already owned, I believe, computer monitor that ran a cable again through the wall into to the bathroom to where the Dell computer was sitting. That was my studio. And I calculated, I spent a grand total of about 300 bucks on that. And I used that for quite a while. I mean, that's what I used to build the six figure business. It wasn't until, you know, I was making really decent money that I started um, investing in other equipment. So if you ever get discouraged or you think, or you, you know, you hear people talking about this equipment, that equipment, that microphone, and you think, oh my gosh, I need to understand all of this. And I need to buy all of this for this to happen. You don't. I mean, just think about me. I mean, I was just, I mean, it was laughable. It's the kind of thing that should go into a museum of voiceover history where people, you know, years from now, or even now would look at and say, oh my, you know, and laugh and say, I can't believe this guy actually was able to cobble this together. And, and I, people actually paid him 
you know, to do work through it. But I did because the reality is the people who are getting the audio, they didn't, they don't know what the setup is. All they know is what they hear. And it sounded good. <clears throat> and because it sounded good, I was able to, uh, to, to use it. So that's voiceover on the cheap. And the great news is today, there are so many more things available that, that are cheap, but work so much easier, you know, given like USB, USB microphones or USB audio interfaces. You got a greater variety of microphones and expensive microphones. Or if you have the money and you want to spend more, you can. But again, like me, you know, I was just using what was available and it wasn't, there wasn't much available and it wasn't pretty. It was pretty ugly looking, but it worked. And if you want to be profitable in voiceover, you learn how to make it work. Well, guys, thanks for being here this morning. I appreciate it. I am I so am grateful for you know you getting on the stream, many of you on a daily basis and following. Um, I need to get into the studio and get things while well, I'm in the studio, but I've got work that I need to get going and doing because we're heading off to visit with some other family a little bit later today for the holiday weekend. And I wish all of you a very happy and safe new year, the best in 2023. And, you know, let's make some good stuff happen. And I said it yesterday and I'll, I'll so I want to repeat it again this morning is that as you're looking to really get a good start for 2023, the voiceover blueprint, this is what I have poured my heart and soul into for the past several years, building a program to help voiceover talent be successful, be profitable, to make money in voiceover. Check it out. You owe yourself at least the time to check it out. Go into the description, click the link, get all the details. Happy New Year, and I'll talk to you guys next week.